Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to wire the Magnum. Uh, I do have to go get some supplies first, so let's go. Alright guys, we are here at Axeman. Uh, they are a surplus store. They have a little bit of everything. I come here for wire connectors, for light bulbs, for zip ties, for shrink tubing, just about everything. Uh, see if you have a surplus store in your town, otherwise you can order things online or maybe even Radio Shack. Alright, let's do a quick rundown of some of the parts I'm going to use. Shrink tubing makes it look good. Cable ties, zip ties, tie things together. We have a switch, we have a horn, we have a voltage regulator, electrical tape, solder, heat gun to shrink the shrink tubing, we have a solder iron, multimeter to test connections, wire cutter, wire stripper, uh, connector crimper, assorted wires, assorted cable connectors, and then last but not least, we've got bullet connectors, which are great. All right, let's get started. Alligator clips are also great for making temporary connections to test things. I'm gonna take off the side cover so I have better access to things. I'm gonna remove the stator plate and replace the lighting coil with a 12 volt coil. Now remove the stator plate. This is the 12 volt lighting coil. We need to replace this six volt lighting coil with it. We can remove these little six volt tail light coils if we want to, or we can just cut the wires and get rid of them. There are a couple spacers, set those aside. This is your new lighting coil, it's 12 volts. And the yellow is for your headlight, the green is for your tail light. Usually I just use the yellow for both. You can put these little spacers back on the top so it doesn't bottom out. Okay. Now reattach the stator. We don't really have to worry about timing for this part because we're just doing the wiring. We can time it later when we get the bike running. Now install the flywheel. I'm gonna put all the wires up here. So I need to extend these guys. This is gonna go from here down to the coil, so that's about enough. Strip these ends. These both use female connectors for the coil. This is where your cable end assortment comes in handy. Crimp them. You can reuse these little black boots. There's one. There we go. All right. We can put a little shrink wrapping on these and put them in. And tuck these right here, like that. So you're gonna put them together like this and then twist them together. I'm just gonna put a little tube over this to make it look a little bit nicer. Now we just need to fish these wires into the frame. Wires from the engine are complete, that looks great. My headlight wire is the shortest, so I'm gonna cut everything to about that length. Now we have to get everything in here. The headlight is gonna Y off quite a bit, so I'm gonna put that one over here. This will be our ignition circuit. If we ground the other side of it, it'll kill the engine, so that's where we'll run the kill switch to. I made a little jumper for the power. We are gonna have a couple different wires for power, so I made a little jumper, so we have multiple terminations. I messed up. This power actually has to go to the um, regulator first. I'm gonna replace these with bullet connectors. So you can cut these guys off. I'll do this one first. I'm gonna slide a little protector on there. Then I use a special bullet connector crimper 
There we go, perfect. For the regulator side, there's a different protector and a female receiver. All right, you can connect these now and then slide this protector over. And now this part of the regulator, now we have regulated 12 volts. So I can mount this up here and we'll zip tie this on. We can mount the regulator right there. The regulator is mounted. I'm going to mount the ground right here. Okay, perfect. All right, now I'm going to do the tail light uh, because I want to ground it here. I'm using a really simple stick-on LED from Amazon. It is made for motorcycles, dirt bikes, so it has a always-on 12-volt uh, running light, and then it has a, a high-power brake light feature. So I really like this one. Uh, I used to run resistors, now I just do this one, and it's way simpler. You can run this wire and simply zip tie it on. I can now connect the tail light. This is pretty straightforward. The, the black is the ground, and so I'm gonna put that in the ground. And I actually added a little jumper to that, because I think that's all the grounds we're gonna need for this. The red is the brake light and the yellow is the running light, so the red needs its own circuit. That's what's gonna run to the brake switch. This yellow is the running, so that can just connect to the little jumper and put that jumper back in. All right, the back of the bike is completely wired. Now we just have to do the headlight, the horn, and the brake switches. Now we're ready to run wires to the front of the bike. We need one wire for power for the headlight, and then we need one wire coming back to power the tail light brake light, and then we need one wire coming back to ground out the kill switch. Okay, these are our wires. We just have to connect them and then run them. Here's our power. This will also connect to the brake light and the horn. This will be the signal coming back from the brake switch to give it full 12 volts and be bright. And this will be the kill switch to kill the engine. I'm gonna shrink tube this now, and I'm not gonna use a lot, just enough to get it to the front. And once I get to the front, I'm gonna use black shrink tubing. Just feed your wires through. Now we can zip tie the terminal block to the frame and we can route this umbilical cord looking cable to the front. On the front of the bike, I have this nice little switch for on, off, and a horn. And it has all these wires and I have no idea what they do. So that's where a multimeter with a continuity tester comes in handy. All right, so black, black and yellow is the horn. Okay, so brown and green, that's the kill. So this is the kill switch and this goes to ground. Okay. So that power goes to the horn. I need to connect this kill switch to the coil, which will ground out the coil and kill it. And I'm gonna use bullet connectors again for these. Now we'll do this one. So this is the kill switch circuit. Okay. For the brake switch, uh, first we're gonna put on this shrink wrapping. Then we'll put in this one, because we need one coming back. Now we need a crimp. I'm just gonna connect it so I know what distances I might need, or what, uh, how far I can put the shrink wrapping on. All right, so that's pretty good. It'll just go like that. Okay. 
You can test it with a multimeter. Now we can connect the wires. Slide this guy over. Pull these guys down. These three that are all gonna be power to the headlight and then the ground for the headlight. All three of these are gonna fit under one blade terminal, but we can try. Okay. So there is our power. Okay, I added one more ground strap for the headlight. Plugs in right here. This is the power for the headlight. Plugs in right here. All right, and now we can button this up. All right, it should be all finished wiring. All right, looks great. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I am done wiring this Magnum. I just took it for a ride. It runs great, the lights work. I am finished for now. I just need to jet this and put the air filter on and it should be good to go. This is by no means the only way to wire a moped. There's plenty of other ways to do it. This is just the way I do it. I hope this helped you. Please like and subscribe.